picking up a well-deserved win, and they did it in pretty clinical style. And I think that's the thing here for Vici. Big expectations, it feels like, coming in. So many big names, so Western fans especially, into that team. It looks so strong on paper. You've got former world champions. Haven't performed yet, but finally a win there, and it was a big clinical one as well. So Vici going to swap to the blue side now. They'll ban out LeBlanc, actually, as their first pick, and Rek'Sai going to get into the bin as well for Gamtee. Yeah, once again, Red Side just going to ban Rek'Sai every single time. And, yeah, you mentioned it. If there was a team that the Western fans were going to latch on, Danny, Mata, Vasily, all these well-known players here. Tong is plays such a fun style of League of Legends. Why would you not want to support that guy? So able to get their first win, and... Gamty showed signs of life in that one. I wouldn't be surprised if they came out pretty strong again. Yeah, I mean, this is, I think, the series where a lot of people look at, and Vici looked at after a really tough weekend in the first week, and be like, okay, pretty sure we can win this one, get things back on track, stuck in this synergy together. And for them, it almost feels like, you know what, we just want to get together as a team. There's a few more bands coming through, Lissandra, Cassidy, and, and get on track and start getting the synergy together. But Gamty are like, you know what, we'll see what we can do. We can maybe give them at least a run for their money. Yeah, and they forfeited early objectives quite well with a Tristana, just let them go, didn't really commit too much to them. And I guess that third dragon fight was the one that really swung it. You felt if they had a shot to get into the game, that was going to be their window, and it just missed out. Two members survived on Slithers of Health, were able to pick up the dragon on the side of Vici. So they definitely deserve to win, but Gamty played that pretty well in their own composition. Yeah, Fizz Band there as well, and you're absolutely right. Gamty playing great, but Vici maybe just playing better. Their team fighting was out of control. Finally, the big utility team with great vision and great synergy coming together a little bit more now. Dandy Amata doing their jobs and everyone else doing theirs as well, and that was the big change for me. Yeah, it certainly was, and I can see why they got rid of that Fizz, because if Mata hadn't have been on point that game, that could have been a hell of a lot different. Leo went absolutely ballistic. I actually think if he had to stay in the split push a little bit longer, the game might have ended up a little bit differently, because he was definitely taking it to Hotong at one point, as is here also being taken off the board. Yeah, so kind of a curious final ban here, and Vici going to consider their first pick now as well. Plenty of champions open, and Vasily says, I want Sivir again. Yeah, why not? Worked out very well last time, and it, with the Janus still up, they can take that one as well. In response, looks like they will be answering with a Jarvan, who does very well against the Civ. It doesn't have the repositioning tool and can really lock her down in those team fights. Yeah, and just a strong champion. I love this from GT, blocking two key picks there away from Dandy and Mata, the Korean duo. Jana for them and the Jarvan as well. Yeah, but it does mean that Lee Sin and Rengar are both available for Dandy to maybe jump on in. Plays both of them extremely well. I don't think you can pick too much away from this guy. Also means Nah will get around to the third round and could go into the top lane for Carry. Yeah, forgot about Nah. They might be picked up here for Vici. Carry's Rumble looking good, but they do want a bigger tank here. Nah and Thresh there. Marta's second string. It's a pretty good one for him as well. Yeah, and there is a scary amount of engage currently coming out of Vici with that Silver Ultimate, the Nah. Thresh able to get in there and land some hooks as well. And the response is quite a good one. Leo going for a Zera just looking to poke from long range. And looks like we're going to consider 80 carries here as well for GT, but we'll see what they want to go for. And Xerath is one of those champions that, are like in teamfight heavy regions, you don't feel like would be that good, but I actually think has almost an underrated amount of uh, teamfight control with the slow and the stun. Yeah, I definitely agree. And all the AOE potential it brings with that ultimate and the long range Q definitely does work out in teamfights. And I guess his one weakness is if they have a Sivir, he is immobile enough that he can get leapt upon. Um, so I guess they need to do a good job of protecting him with the Janna, but if they can do that, yeah, they, he can do a lot of damage. Yeah, we've seen what happens when Corky's with Morgana Black Shields are able to get in aggressively with his short range. They blow people up really swiftly here as Vici can consider their last two picks now for their draft. You mentioned the Rengar, Dandy Kukko there. He's got a couple of options there as well. And Vici going to line up a pretty aggressive team fight comp here. Syndra and Rengar round up their draft. And they can start a fight from absolutely anywhere. That stun is so long range. Going to be able to speed Rengar up and really start those fights with the On The Hunt. I like the team comp coming out of uh, Vici Gaming so far, and a little bit of confusion, I feel, coming out of Gansi. They have some good disengage, some good kite back, but then they also have a very heavy engage combo between the Jarvan and the Rumble. So trying to get a little bit of everything into their comp, and it'll be interesting to see how it works out. Yeah, and I do like Siva Rengar as well. I feel like we're seeing a bit more of this pairing now. You mentioned Lee Sin, who's open. He's falling through this draft, but Instead, they want something a bit more synergistic with Severe. And I know Atlas loves it on the thrill of the hunt. That's the combo we've got here for Vici. Yeah, it certainly is. And also a very good build path for Rengar. Can go into that uh, 
lock it to the Iron Solari, and it just gets him so many early stacks. All you do is you pop it in the team fight. Great double AP comp, and it just gets you so many stacks early in the game, especially with how early we're team fighting around the 12, 13 minute mark, and really sets you up for a very smooth transition for Rengar. And thank you for mentioning Locket. That item is almost quintessentially Chinese, because you're right, they team fight so much that it's like, you know what? Even if you do have maybe a double AD or maybe just one mage, I want this Locket because it just helps the team fighting so much. Yeah, well, it gets. It's a great item for just the aura, and then it gets ahead off that shield. Three members it hits, very gold efficient. Yeah, really nice stuff. And both comps, again, very strong. Gamti, I felt, had quite a good draft in the first game as well. Possibly even a better draft, some people were thinking on Twitter. So we'll see what happens, but I like what Vichy've got. But Gamti, they have a plan as well. I almost feel like we always see Jana and Rumble together, though. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think the Jana Zareth and Jana Corky is good. But then I don't like Jana, Jarv, and Rumble together. So I think that they've got like two mini comps within themselves. There's long range poke and then a very good follow up engage. So it, it all goes down to execution. This comp doesn't make much sense on paper, but you can see how they're trying to work it out. Yeah, and again, options here. Gamty definitely fought well in that last game. So pretty curious to see exactly what I want to do. Vici looking strong again. They really want all three points here and pick up this next move. But we are going to cut to a quick break, guys. We'll be back any second now for this next game. And welcome back. We are on to the rift here for game two between Vici Gaming and Gumti. What a great first game it was for Vici as well. They're on the blue side here for the second game of this best of two. Gumti on the right. There'll be a red team. Looks like both are just going to spread out here at level one. And we'll see what they want to get done with their early warding and movements. Yeah, it certainly looks like nothing funny once again coming through. Thresh a little bit better in invading than last game. There was a Nami in the game, so that hook can be used to good effect. But both teams just happy to... Start the game off reasonably calmly. And I think if we think about the last game as sort of a framing device for this particular one, Vici looking to continue their crisp play and tighten that up even more, get the synergy going, because even if this is a game that they expect a 2-0, they still want to make sure they get good practice in. It's no point being lazy. For Gamti, it's their chance to show off here against a very strong team here in Vici, even though they haven't had the best early results, and really be a bit more decisive and a bit more aggressive. Yeah, I think Vici, now that they've put a good game together, are looking to really condense it, maybe close it out a little little bit earlier than they're able to. And for Gaunty, it's all about, okay, we've had flashes of brilliance, good little skirmishes, five-minute patches. Can we put it together in a 35-40 minute game and actually steal one because they haven't been able to do it so far? Well, we'll have to see. Right now at level one, seems like standard lanes will be broken out into any second. Now, curious to see if either dual lane wants to pick up a small camp for themselves, but right now, no one really positioned. I guess Dream and Tail could rotate up if they wanted to. But it looks like Dandy is going to start on the bottom side with Danger on the top. That could give a small lead to the dual end of Gamti. Yeah, it certainly could if they choose to uh, take that uh, Gromp away. Pastry time. I'm still extremely confused as these people continuing to take Corky into a Sivir matchup. It just doesn't make much sense to me. Sivir just wins the lane pretty comfortably. And even if she doesn't, just gets out without being punished enough for my liking. I really am looking forward to when they start adapting to the Sivir pickup and trying to punish it in lane. And we've seen a bit of adaptation there as well. Tandy getting low, but he'll be just fine in his jungle early on as he smites away the red buff. And I think I agree with you. We've seen a bit of adaptation. Caitlyn, I think, in particular, trying to punish that. And even Deft had a decent go on Ezreal. But why is it that Corky specifically just can't get a hold on this lane? Because uh, Siva can use her uh, ricochet to push out the wave and harass at the same time. Where if you stand off the creeps, as Vasily's just done there, Tail has to choose. Does he push the wave? Or does he harass with his Phosphorus Bomb? And once that's under your turret, that choice goes away completely. You're forced to just farm underneath the turret. No harass is going to go out whatsoever and doesn't really provide much to follow up gank. So it's just one of those matchups that... Sivir is one of those utility ADs that, if you don't punish her enough, just gets away with too much in lane. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Sivers get carried away here. As Vasily Mata, exactly what you said, Spawn, going to put into this turret early on as Tail and Dream will try and fend this off as best they can. No early CS leads yet, but Vasily going to be relentless in his almost solo pushing there in the bottom lane. In the mid, a pretty curious matchup as well. It is Syndra versus Zareth. Very poke heavy. Yeah, it certainly is. And Syndra kind of has to overcommit onto Zareth to really get any kill happening. So not much kill potential, particularly when you look at Leo's summoner spells, has elected to take that barrier up. We'll be able to farm from range. Absolutely fine. And 
Zareth is one of those quasi counter picks. Doesn't really zone Syndra off too much unless it's very well played. But does mean that it won't be that snowball heavy lane that uh, Syndra does like to play. Yeah, and up in the top, Carry and Lightmeet just hanging out. Nah versus Rumble here this particular matchup. They're farming away here. Carry actually going for a long sword here to start things off. Yeah, going to transition into that Hex Drinker nice and early. The three pots just help with the sustain. And this is the reverse of what we saw last time, Pastry Time. So we'll be good to see if Let Me can play as good as uh, Rumble as what Carry did last time around. I mean, is there any particular particular uh, nuances to this matchup that people want to look at because this is getting quite common now in the LPL especially now versus Rumble is seeing a lot more a uh, lot more attention yeah I think that it comes down to Rumble just tries for like the first nine levels to ignore Nara as much as possible that's why you see them take cloth armor or Duran shield you want to sustain through that damage get a couple of harpoons down follow up for ganks where you can but otherwise just concentrate on the perfect CS if you get those two magic pen items as uh, Rumble before the dragon fights start happening you win the lane just because you're a Rumble yep so Danger now going to clear out the Scuttle Crab for himself I believe Dandy cleared out the top side Scuttle Crab as well. So Crab Deft left, right, and center. As Danger will now continue his jungle path as well. Yeah, looking to get in behind this Civil Lane, which is a very good decision. Actually doesn't go for the gank. So Vasily and Marta pushing up very aggressively. Could have been punished there, but do look like they back off. So they're not doing a they're doing a good job of not giving any tells. Yep, Corky keeping up as well. Vasily and Mata actually back off there, knowing that they don't have basically any ward coverage towards the bottom side of that jungle. So I'm gonna keep that cleared up. Danger actually gonna get the Raptor here as well. And now Carry in the top line gonna find Let Me and Dandy. That's a great bowl though from Dandy. And Carry and Megan are I'm gonna try and dive in. They're gonna go for it. Dandy though doesn't have enough health and they do give it up. Yeah, is able to burn the flash on Rumble. So that will be an easy repeat gank if Dandy does want to visit that before level six. Wise choice to not turret dive just because of harpoons. We're back off cooldown. So overall, a very good first tank coming out of Dandy. And I like the jungle item pick up here. Going for that AoE clear helps Rengar out a but after the last patch, able to swap it out for the Chilling Smite when you do want to start ganking. But it's just so important to transition Rengar, who is easily counter-jungled on this patch, uh, into a smooth level 6. Yeah, Hatong actually backing off. Does get delayed a bit there by Dangers, Dangers Jarvan, sorry. And now we'll just go back himself. I think Leo's probably going to try and be as annoying as he possibly can. Clearing out, I think, a pink ward there on the side or just a green ward with the si uh, the vision ward sword that is placed in the left-hand side of the brush. Yeah, so he got the first shot. That's why he's a little bit of CS behind. We'll go back and ma uh, mirror it, Will Hitong. So absolutely nothing really happening in this mid lane so far. Just nice, heavy CS coming through for both lanes. Yeah, we do expect a bit of a farm lane to develop there, and that seems like what's going on, especially for those ultimates that are starting to come out. Mata roaming quite aggressively, though, puts down a very deep pink ward there in the top left-hand side of the jungle. Yeah, and the vision denial starts already. What Gamti has done different this game, however, is get those two deep wards into Rengar's jungle to understand exactly where he is. Um, I speak a lot about Rengar Thresh and how Rengar actually uh, uh, Thresh allows Rengar to gank bottom earlier than any other uh, support player just because he can lantern him into that brush for the uh, free uh, gap closer. So look to see him maybe get down there and try and affect a gank early on. Yeah, we'll see. And But both teams clearly are respecting the dragon here early on, wanting to get deep vision on the side of the map, try and make sure they have control over the area and get in as much as they possibly can. And you talked about Vici wanting to get early vision before objectives come up to have complete control. Gamti mirroring, mirroring a little bit of that here as well. Yeah, they're trying their best to. They, those wards will expire shortly, but they've been able to spot out exactly where Dandy is. The pink ward on the uh, bottom side of the jungle is just so important. That cl being cleared out at this point is just devastating for Gamti. Danger will respond sweeping out the ward himself, but overall, Dandy and Mata secure vision for their team better than any duo. Yeah, Danger does find that pink ward Mata placed down. And Dandy now will look at mid lane as next potential target here. Level 5 now for Dandy. Does have, I think, close to Max Fury as well. Four stacks of five there. Hatong, they're going to continue farming up here, and Dandy does give it up. Again, very farm heavy here in the mid lane. CS looking good as well. 63, pretty much to 63. Yeah, and Dandy, once again, not necessarily looking for his own gank, looking for the counter gank, understanding that Jarvan is a much better pre-6 ganker, so ensuring that as soon as he sees him, he's in the same lane. Don't back into your jungle, because that can mean that the uh, gank comes through before you can affect it. So sticks around for a couple of seconds, gives up some of his own time. There was no major camps up anyway. And now we'll go back and just farm up his red. Yeah, and that's what Dandy was known for at Worlds as well. He always was in the right place at the right time. That is not a coincidence. Dandy is always thinking about what the other jungler is doing, where the map movements are happening, and trying to be in the right place at the right time. And right now with the lanes being nice and calm, Dandy is just farming up now, trying to maximize the time between 
uh, looking for these lands in the counter ganks and getting, make sure he gets his own farm as well. Yeah, he definitely is, and he is equal in that CS as a nice stun comes through from Hatong in the mid lane. In the top lane, a big CS gap is actually starting to come through for Carry. After that flash was blown, uh, blown let me had to play much more safely. So able to grab that hex drinker and really start dictating pace of this lane. Dandy going up there to gank now as well. Yeah, and that flash is not back either. So Dandy with very strong timing. Carry level six does not have his ultimate. It looks like use it already, but is Mega now if they want to look at a dive here. Dandy's level six with max stacks as well. So they could look for the dive of the wave. A little bit, bit of an awkward spot to go for a dive, but Dandy's being patient. Yeah, he certainly is. Let me try to bait the back there to get uh, Carry to push it forward. Does so now. Yeah, Carry with a great bounce there as well. There's the Eagle going down, but Carry is going to do the damage. Dandy got to be careful, but that's going to be a kill. And Nargins no, secures first blood. Yeah, a little bit of split uh, focus coming through for Let Me there. Got both players very low. Decides to try and clean up Dandy there, who didn't have the Hex Drinker. But in the end, nice kill picked up for Nar. That's a 20 CS lead now. And. Vici really rolling in this top lane. Yeah, and Vasily does block the rocket, gets some mana for himself as well with the spell shield. Mato returns to the bottom lane here in the 2v2, and even CS is actually a good story here for Tail. Yeah, it certainly is, and ooh, Hook just misses there. That would have been the bad story. Yeah, that would have been horrible. Uh, as we see Vasily continually trying to push this out, now that the Sheen's been picked up, he can, Tail can trade reasonably well with the rockets and uh, the auto attack poke that comes through. So we'll be trying to force this lane back in his favor. Yeah, will indeed. And that's one of the things we mentioned that, you know, early on Siva definitely has good pressure against Corky because he's just so mana intensive that he can't AoE clear enough. Rockets does change the equation there, though. Yeah, it certainly does. There's a big difference between having to spam Phosphorus Bomb to push out as opposed to spamming Rockets. Just able to do them nearly on cooldown and shove the wave out pretty relentlessly. And we've had a pretty uh, calm nine minutes, actually. Just the first blood there with Dandy having a very patient gank there, timing that flash beautifully. The next dra the first dragon fight, sorry, is probably our first big point of contention with multiple uh, team, team members joining in for that fight. Just by Based on comps here in the early game and how it's played out, how do you think that dragon fight might play out? I think that it depends whether the pick can go through from Vici. I don't think they're looking for a 5v5. I think they're looking to use Dandy and Hatong in the mid lane on that Syndra to try and isolate someone, get a nice pick, and then transition it into an objective. Be that the mid lane turret, which would be very nice to have with a Siva and Rengar on the map, or the first dragon. Yeah, and we saw that a bit with King in the last series as well, actually, where Siva and Rengar just would go in and use their ultimates. They had Zareth, I guess, to pick people off there. Just getting one pick is enough, even if you have to use multiple ultimates. That was, you know, the old school Chinese style that we used to see that was dubbed the freight train. And there's a little bit of that there with on, thrill, oh, there. on the thrill of the hunt. That's yeah. a stupid name, but we'll go with it. Certainly is. And like being able to, I guess, just charge down one member, especially if you get ultimates out of the other team is just so worthwhile. As we see a mass recall actually coming out of game two. Yeah, Vici did actually get that dragon. Apologies that we missed a bit there, but game does continue now. So we seem to have sorted out all the issues. Dandy hanging out in a brush here. And Vich will be happy they do secure their first dragon and a very similar start to game one. Yeah, but a couple of kills went across to Gamti in that one. The jungle and top lane are able to pick up a kill each respectively. So able to get at least something for that dragon. And that was because I'm going to assume Vichy didn't wait for the pick this time around. Gamti were able to teleport down and just a little bit too contested. Yep, the rumble are always Ooh. good. Danger going in. That's a good hook for Mata, but Dandy wants to dive in. No play forthcoming as the Tong's going to rotate in. Nah, back there for Let Me. Gets wall behind and carries, tanking all of the tower hits. Mata going to line up this hook. There's Sindrid looking for the stun as well. Good uh, boulder there for carry as well, and the Tong will pick up that kill. Yeah, the ultimate also comes through from Leo, not able to take anyone down. So a good rotation through from Mata and Dandy, able to blow a lot of summoner spells. In the bottom lane, actually, Tail solos out Vasily. Yeah, and that's bad news for Vasily. Left alone there with Mata going to the top, and Corky, you know, he might not have a good time in lane early on, but he is a great duelist against Siva. Yeah, he certainly is now 1-0-2 and two with two components of that infin uh, Infinity of Triforce coming through for himself. Top lane turret does fall on the side of uh, Vici, so Carry really starting to get going. 50 CS advantage on this Nar, and he's going to be so huge. Yeah, Nar just powering through. There's a, a lot of reasons why Nar doesn't get through very often, and Carry doing a stellar job so far on that champion with his score. Just moving through again. Morelli Nomicon has been completed for both mid laners, so Syndra and Zareth powering up there with their first early item, and oop, Mata wants to hook onto Tail, but he will get the tower. First bottom tail there for GT, and first of the game for themselves as well. Yeah, so Tail able to turn this lane completely on its head. Picked up a CS advantage for himself as well now, as well as that turret. So, 
This mid game, once again, extremely close. Guarantee definitely sticking in there with Vici Gaming. Yeah, with no dragon to fight for here, and Baron not available at least for seven minutes and likely not contested at 20 anyway. We're going to have a bit of a lull here as the teams look to jockey for position and farm up a little bit more. Corky's Trinity Force, though, would have loved to have that in the last dragon fight, but that's a big timing for Guarantee's carry. Yeah, it certainly is, especially when you compare it to Vasily's item. Sitting on a pickaxe and double Dorans along with those boots, that's just... They're completely separate now in terms of power spikes until Vasily is able to go back and grab an Infinity Edge even. This BF Sword might not even help him out. Yeah, we'll have to see. Siva struggling a bit. That's very different to the game Vasily had in Game 1 here between these two. Had a very strong Siva game, but not the same start here as Dream will look to get some wards down. Yeah, and good move from Ganty here, securing their vision of their own jungle, trying to get some pink wards down and deny vision from uh, Vici. The reason that Dandy and Mata were able to go so aggressive is because they knew where exact members of Ganty were in that fight, able to isolate uh, out the top lane and let me and pick him off in a kill. I actually even like that they're just moving Cork into a slightly safer spot to farm as well. Can't really see Janna tier 2. It's a little too far down the map towards enemy territory, so going to give Tail the free farm in top lane. Yeah, especially because it is the bottom side of the map. So sieging a tier 2, especially when... Ooh, Gandhi's popped his ultimate. He wants to go in here. He's kind of alone, but Basili is running in. Does miss the bowler, and Dandy taking a little too much damage. Let me almost overheating though. Basili though will come in. Dandy with another great bowler. Jumps back on top as well. And now Vasily going to chase in the smite, I think, went down there as well. Vasily still going in. Another bowler hits. Danger over the top, though. Might be able to get Vasily and will get the trade. Mata can a lantern him out. And Dandy will take it, though, to running safety. To Leo's coming in. That's a good stop. Mata actually hooked him. So the teleport's now coming through here for Kari, who's going to join in on this now. Mata with the box. Can't quite trap Leo with is out of the way, but Carry will just in there, bounces on top of his head, and there's another kill. Yeah, really good teleport coming through from Carry in the top lane, just making sure that Leo wasn't able to swing anything. We'll give up a turret for his team, but overall, a very good train coming out for Vici. Yeah, Tail will take it, but a thousand gold lead now for Vici Gaming, and that next dragon's up in a minute 40. Tail will take the second turret for his team in the third overall in this game, but a blue buff still going to be taken here. Looks like, I guess Dandy probably takes this one. It doesn't really matter. No, it definitely doesn't matter. They do give it to Dandy probably for that ultimate when he uses it. They want to get it back off cooldown as soon as possible. He can go back and pick up his uh, jungle item as well before this next one. One, zero, and three, and using that brush in the last gank to great effect. And Vasily not going to have his Infinity Edge up for this second dragon fight, though, it looks like. So going to be a bit of a lull for him in terms of personal power. Hitongo powering up with his needlessly large rod. So things looking decent here for Vici's next dragon fight, but it's got you have to be careful fighting dragon against the Corky that's just got his Trinity Force and his Silk Shoes. Yeah, you certainly do, as well as a Rumbler who will be able to maybe no it won't be in time so not going to have that haunting guys but does have the tier two boots actually is backing now so he is looking to pick it up beforehand really strong timing there Gamty even getting their vision down now as well so shades of vici gaming from the last game here didn't get the first dragon gonna look to get no never mind they did get the first dragon actually so yes. looking for a second yeah so looking to pick up their second dragon as they come through here with the Zareth poke they are in a good position to do it although they're starting to fall behind in cs the danger is how big Carry is. He's nearly got that round you an omen. 50 CS up as well as a kill on his direct lane opponent. And whilst they have a stronger Corky now that Corky's picked up those uh, Sorcerer shoes, I think that the Nara is still just massive in this fight. Danny going to clear things out. Vision going to get reaffirmed here by Vici as they try and get a bit of a contest going here. Good protection of the pink wall there by Gamty using... Leo Zareth there to great effect. Dragon is back now. Mata is actually backing, possibly for more vision, but that could give it over to Gamty. Yeah, they do have a ward on it, however, so they will know if they do choose to engage it. Dandy looking for a pick on tail in that bottom lane, actually, as well as Nah, who has just transformed back to Mini Nah. So maybe not much going to go down. Yeah, let me not there. Doesn't have his haunting guys yet either. Actually, presumably after level 11 there in the top lane, they're going to pressure the tier 2 a bit as well. So Vici have full control of the area right now, but danger... Looking to get some wards down as well. Sightstone here for Jarvan as well. Getting, um, again, kind of a dandy-esque performance on this Jarvan. Yeah. And I At least in the build. Just looking for the ultimate that came out of dandy right there. He did use the ulti. Vasily actually popped his as well. So there was a plan for Vici, but that's a couple of wasted ultimates there. Big engage tool's gone now. Yeah, it certainly is. They turn straight away for the dragon to try and get that one started up, but the teleport can come through here. Let me's going in. Yeah, he's going straight in here. The dragon only a half health. 
Beachy have to be careful, and they are going to back off the good equalizer. We'll cut them off now. Zero's going to try and snipe them low. Basili gets low, but spell shields are bolt crucially. But let me is flanking them around. Dandy here as well. Carry with no rage, no tail going in so deep. Gets that first kill for Leo there onto Dandy. Now carry bounding around. And now they're going to chase out there as well. Looks like Mata going to go down there for two for three for one, sorry, as Carry now getting chased away. We'll be safe here, but that was a big win for Gamti. Yeah, massive win and maybe a questionable, po questionable position for the teleport, but in the end it pays off. A good zoning equalizer, making sure everyone had to run across it and Carry just wasn't able to evolve in a meaningful spot for that team fight. No smite here, by the way, so you're going to have to be careful. Has to block the boulder toss. Does come in. Oh, that was so close. But Jarvan does secure the dragon for his team. That dragon stopped on one health then. Able to pick up their second dragon of the game, so much better showing coming out of Vici here. They have a turret advantage as well as a gold advantage at this point as well. And Zareth not going to get any smaller as the game goes on. We'll go back and maybe even pick up that... Uh, Deathcap probably is the next pickup. Yep, seems like I misspoke on the first dragon. It was Gamty that got it, and they make it their second here now as well. Vasily still farming through. He kind of tapped the mat there in that matchup as well. Avarice Plague was his next item instead of really trying to get the Infinity Edge going. So I think knew that he wasn't going to power up for a couple more minutes. Wanted to get a bit more gold flow happening. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. That is just forfeiting the lane. As we see Deathcaps coming out for both mid laners, Syndra and Zareth. Um... It's really important, though, that he gets himself back into a solo lane. There's All the lanes are pushing against Vici at the moment, apart from the mid lane that is just way too dangerous to him to go in. So, so he needs to pick up as much CS as possible as he takes a bit of a tour through the ju jungle at the moment. Otherwise, he's going to fall further and further behind. Corky is in the perfect spot. He doesn't need any more items stays through time. Yeah, Danger here going to clear things out with the help of Dream and Leo. Zareth, the big power spike, as you mentioned, with the Rabadons and Hatong the same as well. So big pick and burst potential there for Syndra and massive poke potential now on the up and up for Gamti as well. And Leo was instrumental in the zoning and damage in that last dragon fight. So Gamti doing the right things. He's still slightly behind on gold, but 600 gold, nothing much at all, especially given that Gamti have their two dragons. And we're in the opposite situation now. Gamti... Uh, I guess with a slight lead, if you want to call Dragon that, but Vici with no Dragons looking to defend the third now when it comes up. Yeah, and it is so hard to, I guess, take neutral objectives from behind. When you are against a Zerith, that guy is so annoying to have to run into. Throw a Rumble in the same team comp, and you may as well just take half your health bar off before you can even get on top of them, unless they get their pick. Yeah, Vasily's IE has been finished now, though, so good power spike for him. Looks that Rumble not going for the guys, actually finishing a Zonya's Hourglass with Needlessly Loud Rod, plus the Arm God, so almost done there for himself. But Carry still massive here on this now. 40 of 50 CS ahead, so Leo going to pick up his blue buff now for himself, though. I'm going to break out again. A bit more farming here while the next objective spawns. Both teams playing very carefully. Yeah, they certainly are, and some confusion for Tail. He actually looks like he's going for a last Whisper as second item as Corky. We talk about it a lot, just with the mixed damage that comes through, does not do as much as other items. And with only Nah, really... That's bad news there. Danger going to get grabbed up as well. Mata will play him back into the box. And there's a kill for Dandy. That's two for zero. Looks like the Snipes are going to attempt, but the Bolt's not going to quite hit. The lands the first one, but can't get the others there. So Leo potentially able to snipe them out. And bit of a weird fight that Rumble just getting caught out. Yeah, don't know exactly what happened there, but on the opposite side of the map to where any action should be, you would assume that is a double ultimate coming through from Sivir and Rengar and just getting in a good position. Mata's play uh, that we just went to secured them that second kill as well. That guy is playing completely on point today. He's pretty good at Thresh and League of Legends in general. I mean, I feel like Janna is a very Mata-esque champion where just so much control and mobility that you're able to be wherever you want to be and get vision. So was very impressed with his Janna play, especially at a macro level in the first game. But his Thresh has always been on point. Mata is just a fantastic all-round support player. He's not the MVP of Worlds for, you know, coincidence. Yeah, no, definitely not. Um, If we just go back to the uh, Corky item build for a little uh, second... They've got a double AP composition. So the other team will naturally build MR. He really needs to be the consistent damage through these fights. So going for a last Whisper second just cuts out a lot of what can be consistent damage from either the BT or the uh, Blade of the Rowan King or that huge spike that comes through from the Infinity Edge. And you're... It could be, it's likely a misstep there for Tail, but for me, that just signals one thing. He is so scared of that Nah, because if Carrie's gotten massive so far with a big CS lead, and he's super tanky already. Yeah, but he needs to trust in his support. We saw exactly how Facili did it last game. Just went pure attack damage and able to get through with a very short range carry like Siva because of how good Mata played Jana, uh, picking up that Crucible and just keeping him nice and safe. I feel that 
if you can't do that, you just need to get rid of the Nar altogether because that's not the way to play against it. Yeah, so we are back into the game here. Gamti have actually been moving forward here. Pick up a towel for themselves in the mid lane, it looked like. Gonna go for this tier two now as well. Ultimates not really available on the side of Gamps. You use most of them already in their last little skirmish. And Vici falling behind a little bit now. Next dragon up in a minute 30 as well. Yeah, so losing some map pressure with the structures, two to three. Seven to seven kills and carry just went back into mini nine. And there is a huge discrepancy in the top side of the map. That is where Vici is ahead. So this Nar compared to, I guess, the Rumble hasn't even... Wow, nice stun. Oh, good stun just missing. Good dodge from Matong. Danger going to dive in, though. And there's Leo with the snipe after Let Me Zeke. As a Mata now going to get chased through as well. Tail going to back her in. And there's a kill for him. And GT really on the up and up. Yeah, all of a sudden able to turn it around. And that's what we I spoke of. If you catch out someone and you walk into a Xerath, you are forced to eat so much damage. Yep, T2 Tower going to fall as well. And Gamti really looking to get aggressive here. Again, playing the one tank compu with the Java and Rumble, but using their engage and their disengage tools fantastically. And Leo Zareth on point so far. Inhibitor Tower in the mid is going to fall down here as well. Possibly even this inhib. Yeah, so really good force here coming out of Gamsi. Understanding that they're in control of this part of the map and able to get in there. Oh, Altos get popped though. Dandy going in with the Cilia as well. Good slow there from Zareth. Trying to move the back line. That carry though wants to go in. Tries to flash bounce. Gets two with the warp. Nars them back as well. But Tail's going to turn around for the damage as Dream gets hooked up by Martha. Now carry in trouble. But Cilia get the first kill. They don't have to let me. Danger in trouble there as well. As Dandy gets low but does not go down. That's two for one as carry has gone out. Tail forced to flash out from under Syndra. And VT answer back. Yeah, they definitely do. Dandy able to survive with a skin of his teeth there. Nearly went down to what is Leo's Zareth. The ultimate is back available. May even be able to defend this turret. No, they've just backed away, giving this one up. Yeah, Dandy's low, but they can't see him. So no snipe forthcoming. And the dragon is alive. Vici would love to get their first dragon of the game. And they're going to rush towards it now as well. But Gumti have three key members alive. They've got Dreams, Jonna, and the ultimate for Leo. They have to be careful. They certainly do, especially with uh, Carry respawning with Teleport. Let me has his as well. Ooh, Dandy. Oh, does dodge the last ball. Dragon low. Does go to Syndra, though. Hatong will secure that for his team, but Tail chasing in for Silly, going down as an exit kill. Hatong now in trouble as well. Sony's there for Let Me keeps him alive, and two kills for Dragon there for GT. And Vasily had to walk through the whole equalizer to get out of that Dragon pit. Just took way too much damage, two for nothing. As the Super Minions streaming down mid lane, they're going to be able to push in bottom. Yep, the Home Guard teleport coming up big there for Let Me Danger clearing out a ward. It will join Leo Tail and Dream here. They're going to push out the tier two in this bottom half of the map. A very slim lead for Gamti in terms of gold, but they're up a dragon and up in pressure for sure. Yeah, and Tail turning it on this game, three zero and seven, having a stellar corky performance. So even maybe if his build isn't optimal, really turning it on. And we talk about him being a big Tristana player, loving to play the, the late game carry for his team, but he's just said, you know what? I want to play a mid game carry, really be more decisive on my team so we can be more aggressive. And his team and his play has enabled so much more decisiveness this game for Gamti. Yeah, and they're playing this comp that has a J uh, Janna as well as a Zareth as still an engage comp. That's why it was so confusing. They're executing it extremely well. Even the kite back that they used before to get Leo a lot of burst onto Hitong. What looked like a questionable uh, draft has actually come up pretty big for Gamti here. Yeah, Mikhail's up for Dream as well. And they're able to keep Corky alive to let him go aggressive. Leo just kind of mediating in the team fights, being a semi-control mage and using the range where he can to help be aggressive when his team does want to go. And we actually saw that with, uh, I think... The last game where we had Siva Ranga and then the Xerathoth to complement those as well. So Gamti using their draft well here. And I mean, again, you said if, they, if that wasn't the plan on paper, it's looking real good in practice. Yeah, it certainly is. And they're able to have pushed down all of the outer turrets, but one in that top lane. So you would assume that is where their focus would be next, as there are still super minions coming down the mid lane. Yep, six turrets down, 27 minutes or so in. Baron is up and ready. And we're kind of at the time of the game now where it's a very real objective to be taken by these teams. A little too powerful when it first spawns at 20 minutes, but absolutely doable here now at 27. And the Vision is being placed down by GT now as well. They're actually getting aggressively onto the left-hand side, swapping the Vision over from the bottom half to the top half. We talk about splitting the map though late game in this patch. Yeah, it certainly does. Dragon is still such an important objective. Vici uh, were able to get back their first dragon uh, with that last uh, engagement. I would thought that they were going to fly in there out of nowhere. 
Carry looking to get busy. Yeah, he wants to go in. They pop his his ultimate. Dandy gonna leap in. Good move there onto Leo. He gets locked down and gets eaten alive by Hatong Dream. And tail fighting in. And Lammy's got a great spot with Dangerous Cataclysm. And look at the AoE damage coming through as well. There's some more kills. GT3 went up already. Carry gonna go down as well. Make it four for one there. And Gamty coming up massive. Lammy's equalizers have been amazing in these fights. Once again, able to split the whole team and force Vasily one more time to run over the whole thing. This guy from starting 1-6 is back to 5-6-8 and having an absolutely monster late yeah, game. Who needs CS when you have kills here? Let me participating for his team. Kind of flying the true rumble colors there as Baron is the objective that Gamty wanted. There were furious pings on through it after that T2 got taken out. They'll make it seven turrets and now a Baron for themselves as well. Yeah, and that is a team fight that Vici started up. So able to kite back a little bit and then just turn it on as soon as that rumble ultimate was down. Really nicely played. Empowered records coming through and they'll be picking up a big back. Yeah, Leo already went back as well just to clear out the bottom half of the map that was clearing, pushing in, sorry, towards the bottom tower there. Got a big amount of AP, 562 with that Baron up there. Three big items for himself and an Aptome could load into his next one as well. Trinity Force now, sorry, Bloodthirst are being completed for Tail to go in with the Trinity Force and the uh, Last Whisper. And my favorite thing in the world just got completed by Dream. There's a Banner of Command on Janna. Banner of Command is such a cool item in this patch because it makes the Super Creep Cannon immune to magic damage. Meaning unless Vasily wants to pop his head out of the base or spam boomerangs at it, it is completely unkillable by Hatong. Yep, I mean Cinder's pretty good at wave clear, but that's all magic damage. Vasily, very good at wave clear. If you can afford to poke out at, what, 500 range there on that Ziva? So we saw it actually yesterday when Invictus Gaming did it. Gamti are going for the Baron, Baron of Command again here. <laughs> and it is such a cool combo coming through. Well, they're going to need a cannon minion. So they'll find one now for themselves as Gamty. You rotate down towards the bottom. Yeah, they definitely are. They just wanted to get that mid lane pushing into close to the inhibitor just in case they do win a team fight. It's so important to be able to transition your minions around the map. Um, so getting minion control in their favor, although top lane is completely against them right now. Let me teleport nearly is up, so maybe send him back up there. Yeah, have to be careful. Let me could go back if he wanted to. Does have home guard as well, so a pretty good candidate for that particular goal. And there he is, the big Baron creep there in the back. He's going to start just whittling away at this turret. They've got poke here. They've got disengage with Jana. VG have no answer. Yeah, they don't even look to try and start this one up. Even with Carry nearly about to evolve through, no ultimate coming through from Vasily. Just giving it up completely. Yep. <laughs> I think if they really wanted to, they could monsoon to heal the creep as well. I, don't, I can't remember if it heals creeps, but that would be adorable. As uh, Dream now is going to back off tail poking as well. Actually adding decent amount of poking. Well, slowly but surely siege this. I would like to see Danger let me block off Vasily's boomerangs, although they do go through, so I guess it's not that bad. And that's inhibitor's going to go down. Mid inhibitor's free now as well. And Gamty getting it done with the cannon minion. Yeah, walking through the base though, split. That is quite dangerous. Tail trailing behind is able to get away from it, so that will be the second inhibitor. Yep, they're going to take this very easily now as well. VG have no response, and I love the Siege Breaker combo there from Gamti. I didn't think we were ever going to see it again, but ID's creativity now. Maybe Infectious here in the LPL is Gamti looking to close out their first win here against VG. Yeah, and they're doing it after what was a rough early game in really, really decisive fashion. The first mid push where they took that inhibitor really spells how they wanted to play this game because once they got given anything, they were just willing to run with it. And that was the thing when I'd, we've seen Gamty play maybe late in last year. They've looked at their top strength when they're playing more objective focus around the map. They're not the best laners. King, I guess, is the team that came in from the LSPL that was known for strong, aggressive laners. VG are going to get a dragon here, so that's their second, but still fighting from behind here up against Gamti. About 5,000 gold between these two, but Gamti, it seems like, when they get a lead, they play strategically actually very well for a new Chinese team. Yeah, and after Dream has used that banner of command to break into the base, he's sold it and swapped back to the Mikhails. So just using it for that one push. Yeah, that's all he needed. Talk about gold efficiency. They got a lot of work done there with that banner, banner of command. I mean, wasting a little bit in the exchange there, but Dream will take it there. So creative. Love to see that. I never thought we'd see that again. And that might, maybe now it's just a common thing here is GT are going to rotate down in look to take out their last inhibitor turret of the game. Yeah, and they don't need to rush this one whatsoever. Two waves of super minions are about to crash into the base. Tail using that shield to, I guess, put down as much damage as possible. And now they'll just wave clear with Xerath and wait for it to come through. Yeah, Gamti are looking... They have to cl they close it out slowly. Their comp's not really good for diving or 
getting into big engages, and Vici do have lots of pick potential, so I have to be careful, but Gamsi have played the team fights very well so far. They certainly have. I guess it now is on Hatong to see whether he can blow up one of the main carries, either Leo or Tail, in this team fight. You feel if the equalizer is in the right position, it might be curtains for Vici here. And Vici, they've still got waves pushing in, carries down towards the bottom, clearing out. Then Nexus turrets are now under fire as well as Carry looking to transform, going to clear that out. And GT are going to get it. Trinity Force Corky, very good at poking, especially with Ajana. And that turret's got no health left. And that's one of the last turrets here of the game. Vici do not have very much base left. They certainly don't. And they're about to lose one more piece of it as well. The Pink Ward's being crept up the whole time, making sure they can spot Dandy out. Really decisive play coming through. Yep, most afraid of that Rengo. I guess they can probably shake off a Tong stun with the Mikhail's there. So as long as Gamti play the last few minutes of this game very methodically like they've been doing all game long, and they're going to look to take their first LPL win. And we'll actually have, by the way, this is a fun piece of trivia. This will be our first ever 1-1 of LPL matches so far. Yeah, it certainly will be coming through. And you feel if uh, VG, uh, Vici want to make a move, they need to go right now. Yeah, I mean, they've got to do something. They're running out of structures to defend here. Just the Nexus and its turrets left as Ganthia is poking back and forth. Danger going to ward down as well. Love the forward warding here for Ganthia. Just wanting to have all of their options covered here. Don't want to get caught out by Vici and potentially lose what is a very one game at this point. Oh, it looks like there Mata it goes. does going in, does flash in. Dandy pops in there as well. Danger, though, does block everyone off. That's a beautiful equalizer coming in. And Mata going to go down now. Carry in trouble, trying to jump on a tail. He actually gets the kill there. So a Tong's able to pick that one up. They're going to flash out of the way and reset the fight. Though Leo misses his stun. Let me in trouble. Danger gets hit up there as well. But now Zerus moving in and snipes him up the back as Let me takes out Syndra. And Let me still cutting away. Vasily, very strong here. But that's a great stun over the top there. Leo going massive on this Zerus. And this might be it, Spawn. Yeah, all in all, Leo played that team fight at the end so well. Good counter engage coming through from GT and they pick up their first win. And wow, what a team to do it against this old Vici Gaming who looked so promising just coming into the LPL but in this matchup especially they're going to feel like they missed a point there. And it, you know, there's a lot of matches we have to play in the LPL. That could hurt in the standings later on. Yeah, it certainly could. That all important three points has slipped away in what would have been a turning point in the season. But you really got to hand it to Gamty for that second game. They played that so well. Yeah, I mean, both teams wanted to are here. Obviously, getting a max points is important, but they'll, t they'll take it. They'll take their first points. They'll get on board for those standings. And against a team like Vici, that's a very impressive performance. Yeah, it certainly wasn't. You gotta say they really shot up their pick bands. I was unsure how the second one went, but they played that composition so well. In game one, they played a very good pick band phase as well. Maybe they're turning a corner here. Maybe, and it was a great day to watch. Yeah, it certainly was. I think we actually have an interview for the last. No, we don't. None of those things, unfortunately. But we are unfortunately done for our LPO coverage. Got a lot to talk about as we sign off here. Guys, LPO will be back tomorrow here on Riot Games 2, so check that out on that Twitch stream. LCK is happening over at Riot Games 1, so check them out as well for your Korean League of Legends pick. And don't forget, of course, we'll be moving over to see the last two teams to qualify for the OPL in the Oceanic Challenger Series continuing over on twitch.tv slash Riot Games Oceania. So we'll see.